just step back. Actually, step back a little bit. Because you're taller. Like, yeah. It's a little too cry out. Oh man, that's kind of that's kind of fun, but I don't, I don't think it's good. You don't think, no? I think it's, it's, it's fun, but it's not good. Yeah, it's like it's like Jurassic World. <laughs> Is it fun, but it's not it's, good? That was the Jurassic World of like shot composition. <laughs> Uh, pretty much. I like that. All right. Hey, yeah. we like you. Yeah. We, in theory, I have not met any of you, but in theory, we also appreciate you because you're taking the time to watch. We this. do. We actually do appreciate you taking the time to watch. Yeah. You know what this is? Yep. It is the Southern California Comics Weekly Video Update. Yeah. That's what it is. Nothing else. Yeah. Nothing else. My name's Rob. My name's Danny. And this is the Sundown Rundown! Oh, I hate you! Yeah. But, yeah, we're gonna talk about the latest comic books as soon as I get over my rage. So I'll start, because there's no rage here. Well, there's a little bit of penance there, but there's no rage. Oh, hey. yeah. We were talking about earlier. I, I had it, it all ties together. You know what doesn't tie whatsoever to the conversation that we were just having? What? Justice League 2001. It is a continuation of Justice League 3000, go figure. Yes. Same team. Giffen, Dematis, Howard Porter. Yep. Very good. More of the future shenanigans of the not quite Justice League. Like, pretty decent read. I haven't read the new series yet, but I always loved the premise. You know the uh, premise, right? Uh, uh, yeah. The clones? They're clones, but yeah. they're faulty clones. They're right. all jerks. So yeah, they've got like the negative qualities, they're on the redeeming ones, or some of the redeeming ones, but not most of the redeeming ones. Imagine if the entire JLA was Guy Gardner. That's just... It's by the guys who made Guy Gardner yeah. great. Uh-huh. God. I need a second. That is the best description ever. It makes me... But I'm picking up this series today, because I've heard such good things about the original 3000, and I was really sad that I didn't get on the how to pick up those trades as well. Where I'm assuming I don't need them to... This. Brand new number one. Brand new. 2001. Since when are superhero comic number ones like inaccessible? Not never. Not. Not never. Not never. How about you, friend? Um, I guess I'm gonna talk about Howard the Duck. Howard T. D. This is number four. It feels like it's been a while. It has been a while. I think it's been a good thing. Yeah. Couple like maybe it's maybe five, six weeks since yeah. the previous one came out, but not necessary amount of weeks. It's a quality comic. I can wait. I don't really care. When comics come out, as long well, as they eventually come out. The dark series, he's a busy man. Yeah, Chip is a dark screen. Busy man. It's a yep. dark screen. He's got this, he's got sex cribs. It's Chippy Chip. Um, who else did this? I'm trying to figure out who. You gotta work harder. You gotta want it. I don't know, man. You don't think you want enough? Some Maybe people drew this. Someone uh, definitely drew this. Oh. Joe Quinonez. I like Joe Quinonez art, especially for this series. I think it's a fun. Oh wow, there are a lot of artists on this issue. Huh? Yeah, this might be one of those jam issues. I that. Actually, it has a backup story drawn by Katie Cook. I personally. No. <laughs> <laughs> that stopped. I didn't expect that to stop you dead in your tracks. Dang. It was just such a straightforward, like... Oh, like, like you like, you believed for a second that maybe I did. I just wanted to... I just asked the follow-up question. You were just like, whoa. Ah, whoa. That's I, like, I assumed you would just take it on faith and let us keep going. But anyways... Uh, but yeah, back to the... Joe Quinoa is a good artist, and the colors are neat. That's it's it. kind of a Secret Wars tie-in, but, like, not the one you're thinking of, like, the old one. The old one that, like, old people like, that Secret Wars. Call them out. Call yeah. Those old people. Yeah. Hey, Fogies, this comic makes fun of your stupid comics. So. <laughs> laying it on. Laying it on thick. What you got? Uh, thick. Super. You, know you want thicker than water and blood. The truth. Wow, that was deep. I thought about it just now. I only have one hand. I can only snap it one hand. Snap it home. This is technically supposed to be the first issue of this new arc of truth being spearheaded by Gene Moon Yang and right. John Romita Jr. Old artists. Really old artists. old artists. It... I like this art. I like the premise behind it. I like uh, down-to-earth soups. Who has the... I feel like 
this is Superman rounded the rank. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. like, I think, like, the point of that will be better realized in this series. Seeing Superman down with the regular people, down with the sickness. <laughs> This is, is this the um, one where Superman opens up his hate? This <laughs> that. Um, but I, I like the premise. I like uh, Jean Luen Yang. I'm really glad that they're bringing sort of these fringe writers into the fold, giving them these these big main titles. Now um, we're talking about like indie writers, not like people who wrote for the TV series Fringe, correct? Correct. So we're all on the same. Yeah, page. you're right. I, I, in case that wasn't clear to those of you at home, you know, yeah. there is an alternate world in Fringe where Jean Luen Yang actually wrote for the TV show Fringe. So, so put that in your pipe and smoke. Uh, what are we talking maybe about? Maybe after hours. <laughs> Superman 41. Truth. You should read it. It's good. You should also check out Greg Pak's uh, Action Comics 41 because it was also good. I think Greg Pak writes a really nice. I wouldn't say a really mean Superman, but it's he's not mean. It's a good Superman, but mean in the sense of you know bad meaning good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> I botched this. You should read it. Just go out and read it. Fight Club number two. The number two. Of case we've been talking about so far. Yeah. That. We're on to some grown folk stuff. Mm -hmm. Fight Club two is a sequel to Fight Club. Imagine that. In comic form. It's drawn by Cameron Stewart. It is written by Chuck Pollard, who wrote oh. the novel. Really did Cameron Stewart's art. Cameron Stewart is so good. Like so good. All you need, man. Like, I'm mostly reading this for the art. I like Fight Club the movie well. Uh, <laughs> is it a sequel? I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably better than most creator-owned comics in terms of interesting stuff happening in every given issue. You're going to go out on a limb and say there's two issues? Yeah. In? Wow. wow. I'm, a, I'm saying that one issue in. Ooh. Like, there are comic books by people I like that aren't as interesting as, like, just the cool imagery in this, even though it's... It's Chuck Palahniuk, so you can take it or leave him. I'm getting a mixed signal from this. So, yeah. I think it's a fun read. Okay. I don't know if it's great, but we do have issues number two and number one. You can judge for yourself. I think I think it's a cut above the rest, and because the rest is bad. <laughs> All right. Well, this is what I was getting at. I didn't want to say that, but then but I did. I, I forced you. I forced your hand. You had to show us. Everything is terrible. Everything is terrible. Not this. This isn't terrible. This is actually really phenomenally good. We are Robin. And if you don't believe me, if you think I'm just some handsy new age uh, kid who thinks that garbage is good, well, even our shop owner here, Jamie Newborn, who is known for having an exquisite taste in comics, says he thoroughly enjoyed the first issue of We Are Robin. He, wow. thought it was, he thought it was really, really well done. He then launched into a personal anecdote about how he knew Lee Bermejo and all this other stuff, which is really interesting. You should ask about it if you come in. But I gotta say, I'm really impressed by Lee Bermejo's uh, work so far, because normally he's known as an artist, you know, Joker, Luther, both with uh, Azarella. Yeah, yeah. And then... Um, wow, I forgot he was writing this. Yeah, this and Suiciders are, I think, his first uh, writing gigs, and they're both really, really well done. I guess he's been hiding this talent from people all this time. But if that wasn't enough, I uh, also am all about, just flash you a little peek here. Well, let's, let's find out the person's name first. Corona? Corona. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Corona. Jorge Corona. Sure it's not George. Pretty sure. Some people who spell it Jorge actually go by George. That's true. It's we'll never up. know. <laughs> but look at this. Like, it's nice, kinetic, youthful stuff, but it doesn't feel... I love that girl, and I like the black man too. Yeah. Um, they do feel, though, like more definitive attempts to make comics younger. This feels like a comic that happens to feature younger characters, uh. but isn't necessarily going for the, for the youthful, you know. Uh, the angst of youth type thing. I mean, of course, that's the point of the series, but like, you know what I mean. Like, sometimes yeah. it feels like it's specifically pointed with that angle. Like, like that's hey the kids. selling point. Yeah. yeah. And that, not that it's a bad thing, because like I said, I think Back Row was a really good series, and I think I thought the first issue of Black Canary was interesting, and the art was great, but 
I just think it's cool that this series shows that, you know, just because you have your cast, you don't necessarily have to do, you know, a Gotham Academy, Batgirl type thing every time. You can have it all. You can have it all. DC, again, proving that they can when they want to be a good company. And if they want to be my lover, they got to get with my friends. Yes. Wait, you guys with them? Uh, we do. Oh, okay. Friends. Sorry, I don't know. Uh, I called about uh, the... Oh, the yes. Let me... Danny. I'm yes. back. <laughs> Alright. Material number one. I am so mad right now. Material number one. Number two. I'm all messed up. Alish Cott, he's the best. Um, I'm not sure what it's about quite yet. It's about AI, it's about all sorts of things. It's about our modern condition. And I love it. I'm stoked for number two. We have number one. Quite a few copies, so come pick it up. Uh, that's it for this half of the video, so come back, but which I mean keep sitting there, and we'll uh, tell you about some more stuff. Some of it good, some of it great. Yeah, getting it. Okay, girl. Mm -hmm. I was going off again to the part one. You're oh, back. Moving, moving even more. Part two. All right, so you're back. Uh, we're going to talk about Secret Wars. New Marvel Secret 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 Wall Oh God! Wow. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Let's no, not go that, that far. Is that all right? This is the new Marvel Comics event. Uh, the premise is: Hey, remember old stuff? Well, do whatever you want. I don't care anymore. Except we care because these comics are crazy. They're actually pretty. Yeah. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Good. Like. A lot of weird stuff, a lot of Elseworlds type stuff. It's literally a title called Weird World. Yes. It's all kind of a throwback to old events. Mm -hmm. Some not. It's I don't know. Uh, there's a comic called The Infinity Gauntlet. It which, is good. It's awesome. It's by Dustin Weaver and Gary Duggan. Mm -hmm. All about it. And it's like a space extraterrestrial fight manga. Mm -hmm. And I guess there's Nova Core in it. And like Family. and uh, Thanos or whatever, but also the Guardians of the Galaxy are in the background. Are they really? There's at least two of them pop up. Sweet. Yeah. This is. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is Star Wars as well as Gamera. 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 Yeah, it's a cool comic, but you can't buy it here because I got the last copy. Like a champ. Like a champ. We'll get more in. Yes, we will get more in. That's how we roll. <laughs> That's how we roll. But you, you are going to want to read it. It's very good. You know what else is good? Not that one. I like this one. Oh, well, not, not that the other one, but I, I know for certain this one because I read it. Uh, Planet Hulk. Although it does occur to me other people might have a different definition of good. We'll, we'll find out, though. Our definition of good is great. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's fun. I don't know. I just, I love the premise. Gladiator Hulk. Red Dinosaur. Red Devil. Devil Dinosaur. Devil Dinosaur. Thank you. Yes. I don't know what happened to my brain. So I just scrambled. So, Cap Devil Dinosaur. Captain America is basically Snake Plissken and has been thrown into Hulk World to gladiator fight everybody. Mm -hmm. And what's like really great about it is that, I mean, aside, again, from the, the Sam Hoffman's, the writing being actually really, really solid, um, and I gotta say, I, I really am digging the art in this series. I don't know why, but what you got? This gentleman, Mark Lanning, he, he draws a good Steve Rogers face. That is definitely Steve Rogers' grouchy old face. <laughs> Look at it. You know old man? Steve Rogers. He looks like a caveman. It's great. Yeah. It is. He's, <laughs> he's no different from the Hulks. But like, what I like about this is it kind of turns the Captain America mythos on its head. Yeah. It's not... Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's like this is all just a big remix of all yeah. kinds of Marvel and lore. But it's still like, you know, it's a very easily understandable cat. It's well written. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to read anything else really. Well. At least I don't. Yeah. I mean, you have to do anything you don't want to. Peer pressure. Where monsters dr dwell. This is number two. I didn't realize number one was out. But this is like old timey yeah. war comic yeah. pilot yeah. stuff. With like monsters and dinosaurs and like buxom dames. They called them dames back then. They didn't call them do that. dames back then. There's cool stuff like a giant shark and a giant crocodile. Thank you for that history lesson. Mm -hmm. 
I'm look, I watch a lot of Madden. <laughs> but it's cool. It's yeah. Darth Venice. Yeah. Going back to the well, not even really the Super Bowl, but sort of like the fringe titles of uh, I yeah. said it again. Man. Sort of the out fringe great show. Joshua Jackson. <laughs> Queer for or whatever, <laughs> I forget her name. That sounds right. Yeah, uh, uh, um, I don't think it is Queer for It is not Queer for that is, that is a name of an actress. Yes, she, she was a good actress. Alright. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, good. I can't really like a B. Don't, like don't you remember our definition was good of good is great? Right, that's right. It's I did, like you forgot the kind of thing I just said. It didn't matter. Part of the day. Learning the terminology on the sundown on down. <laughs> oh, um, I deserve that. I totally don't even that sentence. Oh, the properties, Savage Lands. Um, oh, she, Shauna the She Devil. Shauna the She Devil. Shanna, 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 Shanna. Shanna, 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 Shanna. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> I'm fine. Fine. Then we've got Korvax Saga. Ooh. I didn't actually. I'm. I know all these characters. Korvax Saga, the original Guardians of the Galaxy. I know of Korvax. I know of all of this stuff. It's a good saga. Is it? You should read it. But not that one. I mean, that one too, but like the original also. Right. You don't have to, but you should. Maybe I will. I might, because I did actually enjoy this uh, this first issue. Dan Abnett, Schmidt, something Schmidt, Otto Schmidt. It's good. I like the characters involved. I like the way they're written. I like the art. Really, I'm not going to lie, the art is what's doing the most for me. Really energetic? Really energetic. I explained it. To Danny earlier, and you can judge for yourself whether or not this is an apt uh, description, but it kind of strikes me as if you were to take Jim Food style and Marvelify it, make it a little more Marvel House style. And of course, it does lean a bit towards the Marvel House style, as you've seen. But I feel like it's got that sort of like wild energy in it that you don't normally find in a lot of writers, Oops, artists. Or floundering. All right. I was really excited for X Men '92. You were, yes. Past tense. I haven't read it yet, oh. but now it's out, <laughs> so I have more reason to be excited because I can actually read it. So you are excited. I am still excited currently, but I was also really excited. You understand, right? I do. I know. I'm with you. Uh, you remember the cartoon? Well, it's back in comic form. Uh, Chris Sims, Chad Bowers, Internet People, Scott Koblish, a guy who's best known for. Um, what's his name? For inking Scott Collins's pencils on like the Flash and stuff, I believe. Sure. Yeah, why not? You believe? He's got a got a cool animated style that fits the uh, X Men of the 1992 era. I know it will happen, but what I really, really want in my heart of hearts is for they've already revealed some characters are going to be existing after uh, Secret Wars ends. Uh, Sinister Squadron or Squadron Sinister, whichever order it goes in, yeah. is going to be an ongoing series after Secret Wars. Yes, Squadron Supreme, I believe it's oh, going to be. That's it, sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he did not like that. <laughs> but you were right. I just that it was the end of the thought. We both run out the train of conversation. Yeah, and it Which was is terrible for flat, video. Though. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, and then you know, like Old Man Logan's getting exist. Uh, we've got characters kind of bleeding through. What I really wanted was for them to be like, yeah, guess what? X Men from the X Men '92 series are going to stick around. Because I really want to watch Scott from X Men '92 have to face Scott from the mainstream universe, who's like a pseudo mutant terrorist. I think it would just be freedom fighter. Freedom fighter. Yeah. Uh, and last on my agenda. Now, see, okay, this series is Age of Ultron versus Marvel Zombies, right? You're thinking like, oh, what? No. Oh. I actually was not. I was thinking, yeah. You throw um, together those titles. You throw them together so hard. I don't even care. You're just, you're just. <laughs> yeah, why not? Actually, someone pulled these two series. Like they were like, all right, let's get all of the events we've had recently and put them in a jar, and we're gonna pull them out. We're gonna match them together. And someone just happened to come across the phenomenal combination of Age of Ultron and Marvel Zombies. But what gets me about it is the team. James Robinson, mm -hmm. Steve Pugh. Mm -hmm. What did they do recently? What did they do recently? Did they do the Invaders. All the Invaders. So what does that tell you? Is the Invaders. There are probably going to be some Invaders characters. Wow. <laughs> they literally invaded this comic book. <laughs> Snap. And I really, I don't want to give away the reveal of who's in it because I think it's supposed to be a pseudo important part towards the end. But 
it's if you like this pair as a team, which I do, I like uh, a lot of the all new invaders. Steve Pugh's art sometimes the faces are a little, but um, for the most part, I really like his stuff, and so I think it's gonna be fun. You know what I know is gonna be fun? Oh yes. Oh yes. He's for extinction number one. This is the uh, Grant Morrison's new X Men themed uh, tie in. Which Danny just made me read, and it was really good. And if you haven't read it, you owe it to your life to read it, especially if you like X Men. I love it. I love it. It's written by Chris Burnham, who is an insane person. Is he doing the art right now on um, Nameless? With the... Yes, he draws Nameless, he drew Batman Incorporated. Are you reading Nameless? Yes. That series, man. Yeah. Grant Morrison. Why did I ask? Grant Morrison's writing. Of course you're reading. Yes, totally. Always. Yeah. Always. So he's writing it. It's drawn by Ramon Villalobos. He's kind of channeling. Yeah, he's, he's got a Frank Whiteley thing going on. Yeah. Which again makes he, sense. He's got to pay homage. And he's kind of got his own, his own yeah. sort of thing, but you can tell a whole lot quietly in this. Yeah. We have the return of a giant sperm, as we remember from New X-Men. We have dope colors. We have... Uh, a lot of that Magneto jacket. Yeah. The classic... Uh, X Men, <laughs> new yeah, X Men. Can't exactly show that. Thing yeah. that it's out. Oh, I'm stoked. <laughs> like, the Lobos is my dude. Mm. That dude is hilarious. He he's been talking on Twitter all day about how he he drew uh, Logan as a Mexican. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah, <laughs> he, he is a hilarious dude, and I'm stoked for this comic. And Chris Burnham writing comics is always insane. Super. Did you, did you read his, um, whatchamacallit, his Batman Incorporated fill-in, where it's all about the Batman of Japan? I've heard good things about It's that. insane. It's really, it is the craziest thing. He's off the rails. Yeah. All sort of crazy. I believe there's a person with tiger's heads for fists. Yeah. I love him. Chris Burnham is a crazy person. How impractical. So I'm excited for Ease for Extinction. And you should be too, and we have a bazillion copies, because we know you're going to love it. So. Do the, do the tiger say the hands, do they eat? They got to, right? So, so does that do process food through his wrists as well? Is through his, like, like, the, is it going up his arms? Obviously. I, uh, is this the explored arm? at all? <laughs> I don't believe so. Are we just taking on faith that this man with tiger fist for hands? We really are. Works out his stuff? I'll believe it. That's it for us, I think. You have any announcements? Anything you want to talk about? Uh, I assume comic book store related or comic related. Hey. hey! There is actually some really exciting stuff coming up next Tuesday, starting at, I believe, 10 30, but just coming on Tuesday, you'll see Brent Anderson? Yes. Brent Anderson. Brent Anderson, that's what I said. Astro kind of City? Slurred in the end a little bit. X Men, God Loves, Man Kills. Nothing else. Uh, I know. Strike Force Mortar. Oh, Mortary? snap. Strike Force uh, Mortar. Uh, that's what you think. That's good, though. No, no, there's one more. Oh. It's Rising Stars. There it is. Oh, yeah. That's the big one. You did the last, like, the last chunk of Rising Stars. The yeah. good part. Mm -hmm. He was drawing. He was drawing. So, those things. He'll He's be gonna appearing. Be in. He's going to be signing. So. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, you may or may not have known if you've been on the site website. Jamie got. Uh, I said the site website. The shop's website. Jamie recently purchased some art and we found out that it was stolen art from Brent Anderson. And we returned it to him and he was eternally grateful because we were good people. And he came in and was like, yo, I would really like to pay you guys back for being such good people. How about I come in and do this art? And Jamie was like, of course. It's going to be here. It's going to be here. It's really exciting. You should come in, talk to him. He seems like a really cool dude. Very down to earth. Bring um, your Astro City issues from the sun? Mm -hmm. Bring your Astro City issues. X-Men? Some of your X-Men. Really, just the one graphic novel. The only one you need, really. Let's be honest. Yeah? No. 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 I was not <laughs> honest when I said that. Um, but yeah, it's fun stuff. I don't think anything else. Oh, uh, exciting is happening. Cool. Cool. Everything exciting is happening. What am I talking about? Nothing is anything exciting. It's happening to me. We gotta, we gotta finish up this video. It's been a very long day. Yeah, I couldn't. I can't conceal my excitement to be here with Danny and you guys. It's just so much. It's overwhelming. We'll see you next week. It'll be okay. I'm going to.